By the end of today's video, you should have a strong understanding of different tank style drivetrains that exist for robots. You just have four simple traction wheels having a central rotation in the middle to be able to go up and over a whole bunch of different, the pluses and minuses of the different types and why you might want to pick one for your next robotics project. And if you're on the competitive robotics side, like an FTC, FRC, or VEX student, I'll also give you some notes on why you might want to choose one of these tank style drive chains. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And I know that picking the right drivetrain is that right foundation for starting your project off. Let's talk about what exactly a tank drive setup is, because there's many different ways that you can set up a tank drive chassis, but they all kind of follow the same principles. And for the most part, a tank drive has a pod on the left and a pod on the right, and each pod or each side of wheels is independently constructed. Tank drive is probably the easiest drive that you can set up to create for a robot chassis. It's got really strong pushing power, and it's pretty easy to control. You can either control it with a single joystick, just like how you control things when you're driving on a video game using arcade drive, or you can have two joysticks where one controls the left side of the robot and one controls the right side of the robot. Uh, some of the big drawbacks of tank drive is that they aren't very fast. They can have some wheel drag or wheel scrubbing when you're trying to rotate, and they're not the fastest at navigation. However, if your project is needs simple design, you're maybe new to competitive robotics along those lines, or maybe you just don't need a very complex idea, a tank drive is a great place to start. If you're thinking about a tank drive setup, there's some questions you can really consider. Does your task involve pushing objects or resisting some sort of external forces? A tank drive is a great time to use one of these. Is your operating area pretty open and clear, or is it filled with a lot of different obstacles, meaning you're going to have to have some pretty intricate movement? And is simplicity in your design and programming as simplicity a really high priority in your project? If so, you should probably use a tank drive in your setup. It's really good for direct pushing power or maneuverability. It's great for anybody who's new to starting out robotics. You can start things really simple, get things out right away. If you're on the competitor robotics side of things, this is great for defense heavy games where you need to be able to hold some sort of position or some sort of pushing map. If you have some sort of holonomic drive, if you're aware of what those are, drives that can move in any direction, it's really easy for you to get pushed around. So there are four common types of tank drive. The first one is a push bot. This key characteristic of a push bot is you've got two powered wheels, you have two sort of free spinning omni wheels. So you have two powered wheels at the back and two kind of free spinning wheels at the front. Let's take a look at some examples of these. This is a really simple robot that's driving around. We'll go back and watch that one more time. You just have two powered wheels up at the front here and two wheels that are omnidirectionally capable of spinning and moving in another direction. You've also got this robot here where it's got two free spinning omni wheels and two moving wheels in the back. This is sort of a Tetrix uh, starting robot. You can see that it's not very strong at being able to move yourself around, but a key benefit of this is it's really easy to get it up and started. So it's extremely simple to get started, yeah? You need two motors, you need four wheels, that's it. It's low cost and it's low weight. It's pretty cheap to get things started and it's a great place to start learning. When you're really learning robotics, you want to keep things really, really simple. Now, it's got a lot of minus points. There's not a lot of traction. It's not very easy if you turn around. Your center rotation's at the back of the robot instead of in the middle of the robot. So a lot of things could be improved. So when might you want to use one of these sort of push bot or simple two motor with omni wheels in the front setup? Is it a simple educational task? Is it non-demanding? Is your drive server smooth? Are you trying to keep costs really low as much as you can? Great time to use a push bot. When should you use a push bot? Basic educational, realistically. In competitive robotics, you're almost rarely going to see these at a high stage. You'll definitely see them at the start in lower level competitions, but it's really challenging because you don't have a lot of pushing power and you don't have a lot of maneuverability. So trying to keep a simple robot like this is not going to be very competitive if you're an FTC, FRC, VEX, any of those competitive robotics sort mm. of things. The next style of a tank drive is a four-wheel drive. And this is characteristic where all four of these wheels are powered. It can either be linked by a chain or it can be having four individual motors as you have seen in this example here from Go Build Us Hammerhead chassis. Now, all four wheels are traction wheels set up and this typically means that these wheels are not omnidirectional. Like in this back one here, you have something called the Omni Wheel and they have these little rollers on the side that allow them to move left and right and rotate along these axes. It's omnidirectional. Whereas a traction drive will typically only spin forward. 
Let's take a look at a FRC team driving around one of these. You just have four simple traction wheels. Um, you can see there's a little bit of uh, wheel scrub in that it doesn't actually turn rotate very quick. But this one has a light robot and it's not bad for going forward and backwards, but turning is not fantastic. So what are some good things about a four wheel drive with four traction wheels? Well, one, it's really simple to drive again. It's not very challenging. You can even have both these sides linked to the same motor. So programming is not any more complex than a push bot. It is pretty stable. For straight line traction, you've got really strong because you have four traction wheels and it's pretty common. It's buying forward, put on. Some minus points on it. It's not great at turning. Unlike your push bot, you're actually gonna get better turning with a push bot than you will with a four wheel drive robot that has four uh, traction wheels because your central rotation may be in the middle, but you have a little bit of wheel scrub. Typically, you should have enough power from your four motors to be able to overcome those. These things can rock. If you're on a sort of non-flat surface, you're driving over rocks, you're driving over forest, whatever, one wheel can lift off and then you have a center of mass that's no longer balanced in the middle of your robot. Sometimes these chassis can get stuck. They can get high center in the middle of an object and then you may not be able to have all four wheels done. Some consideration questions to think if you're considering a four-wheel drive. How flat and smooth is that surface? Do you need precise and smooth turning? Sometimes you can kind of jitter as you turn around a corner. If you use these high grip wheels, are you okay with a little bit of wheel skid depending on what surface you're using? When should you use a four wheel? If it's got a, it's a great starting point for people just getting into robotics and it's a miles better than a simple push bot that just has two motors. In competitive robots, you see these a lot in VEX, but in FTC, FRC, we typically use Omni wheels on top of this like Omni wheels on one side, so you can still have all four wheels powered, but you can still get those benefits of a better turning. Or we move into something like a six wheel chassis which has some sort of drop center, which is our next thing we're gonna be talking about, which is a six to eight wheel drives with a drop center. If you're gonna be using a tank style, this is my preferred method for most robots, unless you're on the educational starting simple. Once you start getting a little bit more advanced, these start to become quite viable uh, setups for rovers. Some key characteristics of these, they have four to six powered wheels. Their middle wheels may be dropped and they may include two to four Omni wheels. So in this setup for one of my past tutorials, I have two Omni wheels in the front and then four traction wheels at the back. And let's take a look at some of this drop center, sometimes called drop center drive, sometimes it's called west coast drive. So we can see a robot driving out here you can see it's actually pretty quick at being able to turn around. The wheel scrub is not too bad because at this point, you only have four wheels contact at the ground instead of all six. There's a, another point here from a West Coast drive. You can see that this robot sort of tips a little bit. That's because the bottom wheel is dropped slightly lower than the rest of the wheel. And because it is, you're only having to turn on four wheels instead of turning on six. So you still get some benefits of having a six wheel drive and the extra stability that has and having a central rotation in the middle of your robot while you remove some of those detriments of having all four wheels kicking on the ground. And the last example here, we have four Omni wheels on each corner and then two traction wheels in the middle and all six are powered by a gear train. So why might you want to use a drop center robot? Again, that drop center is this middle wheel, lowers it down so you only ever have four wheels contacting on the ground. It's got much better turning than your standard four wheel because you can have two different centers of rotation you can also have uh, you don't have as much traction as you're spinning around but you still get great traction for be able to push things forward so it does compromise a little bit of traction but it still allows you to have better maneuverability than a straight four wheel chassis does and it gives you a much wider wheelbase which is pretty huge now one of your minuses here is that you do have that rocking motion so your robot ends up being a little bit unstable in acceleration, especially if it's on a tall arm, it can have a little bit of wiggle. So that's something to think about. Uh, you need to be able to precisely put that middle chassis in the middle. So if you're not using strong enough components, you may not be able to set up that drop center accurately. Uh, and then while it's still able to be moved around, just like all tank drives, it can still be pinned because it's able to be rotated around or you end up getting stuck on points you have to back up. Some other common configurations, you can have a, as we saw in that previous video, four Omni wheels in the corners and two trank drive. This one, of course, sacrifices a bit more traction, but you're going to get much better rotation points with their center rotations in the center of your robot. You can also even do an eight wheel. 
On an eight wheel, typically the middle two wheels are dropped and they come a little bit closer. Some consideration questions if you want to do a six wheel drive or an eight wheel drive with a drop center. One, does your task need a balance of strong pushing and agile turning? I'm a big fan of this. Is there a tall attachment robot that might be affected if you have some sort of rocking motion? You might want to do a six wheel or four wheel drive if you don't want to have that rocking. Are you personally capable of manufacturing that frame to be able to drop the center? Do you have those abilities? So if I had to pick a tank drive, this is my favorite way of picking a tank drive. It would be a six wheel with a drop center, especially in competitor robotics. This is quite common uh, in FRC and it's a great balance of performance and relative ease of assembly, especially if you're on the newer side of things in FRC or FTC. This is a quite simple drivetrain to build, get up programmed. It's also not too complex to drive around, and it can be competitive at high levels, especially if you have a a game that requires a lot of defense. The last style of tank drive, of course, is where tank drive comes from, which is literal tank treads. You have two motor pods, sometimes two, sometimes four motors, and then you have interlocking treads or a single band that actually runs around on these. So let's take a look at some of these. This is from an FT example. Tank drives are great at climbing because they're capable of moving themselves around. Now, this is a little high center to the back. And then, of course, we have James Burton's video here of a little 3D printed uh, tank drive, and it's quite good at uh, driving over lots of different terrains. And that's one of the main benefits of literal tank treads to be able to go up and over a whole bunch of different types of terrain. You can also cross gaps pretty easy on a tank tread. On wheels, if one of your wheels comes off, you don't have power across your entire track, but on a tank tread, you do have that. So if you need to cross some sort of gaps, you also have great traction with tank treads uh, because rather than just having one wheel, two wheels, or three wheels on each individual respective pod connected on each side, you have the entire section is uh, grounded to the floor so you, or to whatever surface you're on. Uh, so lots of great traction. However, what you gain in traction, you lose in speed overall. They tend to be pretty inefficient. They're very power hungry compared to wheels. They, just like with your four-wheel or six-wheel chassis, you have a hard time turning. In fact, it's almost sometimes worse because now you scrub across an entire flat length. Treads also tend to be pretty high in maintenance. They have parts that can break. It's difficult to keep things properly tensioned. So it's a lot to keep in mind there. Some more considerations. Do you need to go across really uneven terrain or cross gaps? Tanks excel in that. Do you need that climbing ability more than speed and agility? And are you prepared to help manage some of the mechanical complexity that comes with doing tank treads to be able to do that repair work for it? You should choose these if you're doing some sort of outdoor all-terrain vehicles, you know, bomb disposal robots are great at this, or any application where you have really uneven ground. Yeah, and you need to make sure you have uh, stability across all these different terrains. In competitive robotics, maybe if there's really high terrain issues, or you need to do some sort of climbing. Otherwise, in competitive robotics, you typically don't see tank treads just because they are so slow, their maintenance is really high, and they do not turn very well. And typically, competitive robotics either favor high defense to be able to push things around, but a balance of being able to move around quickly. Because even if you have high defense stopping other robots from scoring, you still have to be able to move your robot around agile. You have your standard push bot, you've got four wheel, you have six wheels, six wheel drop centers, different omni wheels on the corners, uh, and then tank drive, and even eight wheel. And then the considerations that come up with why you should choose one for the other, as well as some questions that to consider about why you may want to do this in your robotics project or why you may want to do this inside your competitive robotics channel. If you want access to further resources and more detail here, you can consider supporting the channel and joining up in the memberships in the link down below. It gives you access to CAD files, give you access to further in-depth tutorial resources, as well as some one-on-one feedback uh, from myself on your projects. Game Manual Zero has a great write-up on drivetrains, as does Purdue Sigbots, also has a great write-up on drivetrains. Otherwise, I hope you found this overview useful, and best of luck on your next robotics project.